Welcome back, everybody. Back to the prediction videos. Back to a UFC fight this weekend. It seems like there hasn't been a UFC fight in forever. So I'm super excited to get through this and watch the fights this Saturday. So this is my prediction video for a UFC fight that happened in Moncton this Saturday. And to be honest, it looks like a very fun card. Maybe not the biggest names on the card, but definitely fun matchups. So we're going to start with Kelvin Cater versus Chris Fishgold. This is going to be a very fun fight. A lot of people don't know about Chris Fishgold, and a lot of people are very high on Kelvin Cater. This is not going to be an easy fight for Cater at all. Fishgold is very capable. He is coming off, I think, a seven-fight win streak, most of those coming by submission. He's been on a roll. He's been always looking to come to the UFC, and he's finally got a shot against a very tough opponent here, one of the best guys outside the top 15. And Kelvin Cater lost his last fight, even though everybody was so high on him, but then again, he lost to Hinato Moicano. Not something to hang your head on. But Kelvin Cater is an excellent boxer, one of the best boxers in the entire division, he has every punch in the book, and he is a master at fundamentals. Good jabs, good uppercuts, and tight, doesn't loop him up like Conor McGregor would do or something. Left hook is there, right hook is there. Only the right hook behind his left hand, he never throws it open. He has an overhand right, a very powerful straight right hand, but his best weapon is that jab. He measures distance well, disrupts the opponent well with it, and sets his punches up. He has excellent takedown defense, has never been taken down in the UFC. And that's going to be a big thing coming into this fight because Fishgold will be looking to take him down. And Cater can throw high kicks if he wants to. Cater is also very tough, very durable. His biggest weakness though are leg kicks. And Fishgold throws leg kicks. That's going to be a problem here. If he can't check those leg kicks, they're going to do a lot of damage because Fishgold is very fast. And then you go to Chris Fishgold who is very well-rounded. Good leg kicks, good body kicks, good overhand rights. His boxing is not the best, but it is there with a sense of danger. Right, He has takedowns as well. He is good with trips on the cage and great takedowns. If it gets to the ground, Fishgold has a big advantage here. Excellent scrambles. And his rear naked choke and guillotine are super quick. Almost snake-like. So Cater is going to have to watch out if it ever gets to the ground. He's going to have to utilize a sprawl and brawl tactic. Chris Fishgold, though, he loves to throw overhand rights and left hooks. Those are punches Kevin Cater can definitely move away from. Fade away and counter like maybe he did against... Shane Burgos, where he faded away and threw an uppercut, but he set it up because of that jab and straight. But he could just do that last sequence to potentially counter Fishgold. Fishgold, though, he does do something very alarming that DC does. He dips to his right a lot, especially when the opponent comes in on him with straight shots. He will try to dip to the right, get his head on the outside, especially on the jab, and enter in the inside with the jab or with a takedown. And he does this all the time. Cater could time a left high kick, very similar to what John Jones did to DC. So my prediction for this fight... I'm going to go with Kelvin Cater. I'm going to go by a second round TKO. I see a lot of shots potentially being open on Fishgold, especially the left high kick. Leg kicks as well. Fishgold doesn't check kicks. And the jab is especially going to just pepper Fishgold all night if he can't get that takedown or get under it. But this fight is extremely close. People are going to be pretty impressive with Fishgold in this fight. Then we go to T-Ball Guti versus Nazrat Hakparas. This is going to be a very fun fight. Two pressuring fighters who do not take back steps and love to exchange shots especially with boxing combinations. T-Ball Guti, very tough, does just that. That's his main game. Doesn't throw too much else besides his hands. Loves to throw overhand right, left hook is there. Loves to pressure, loves to disrupt the opponent's momentum with that because he never backs away. He'll press you, duck his head, throw left hooks, throw right overhands, throw a jab on you. Straight right hand is there as well, like he landed on stage north cut. A lot of shots there. And he has pretty good takedown defense if it comes to that. But... I see this fight heavily favored for Nasrat to win. He is very similar to Kelvin Gastelum. He doesn't just look like Kelvin Gastelum. He fights like him too. Especially with the southpaw stance, he could step on the outside throw the left overhand. His left overhand is his best punch. He has a very quick right hook. His punches are so fast and snappy. I think they're going to catch T-Ball Guti off guard. And, I mean, they caught Mark Giacchese off guard, of all people. And that guy is known for his speed. Good takedowns if it comes to that. He is more well-rounded than Guti is. Can go for double X trips against the cage. So at the end of the day, I think Nasrat's punches are going to be too fast, too powerful. He can get on the inside of the overhand and left hook of Guti. His jab is going to be there as well if he wants to just cover distance instead of just landing it. And measure for his left overhand or left straight. And his right hook is always going to be as a follow-up. So I'm going to go with Nasrat. I'm going to go by a... I'm actually going to go by a first round TKO. There's a lot of good fights here, man. Then we'll go to Misha Sarkinov versus Patrick Cummins. Interesting fight. Misha Sarkinov was the biggest prospect in the division, but he's on a two-fight first round knockout loss streak. I think the Volcon fight really cracked his chin, but he is extremely well-rounded. Good takedowns, good trips in the cage, good with pressure, good with blitz-style combinations. The only thing he's not really good at is moving backwards. He loves to move forward, especially against strikers. 
Against wrestlers, he could defend the shots, he can transition and reverse the positions. Against strikers, he has a hard time doing that because of the distance between him and his opponent. But other than that, he has good straight shots, doesn't really throw too many looping punches, good kicks as well, very capable on the ground, has good submissions if it gets there. To be honest, I don't see too many ways Patrick Cummins can win this fight. I think his takedowns are going to get stuffed. He is just a pure wrestler, pretty one-dimensional in that. The striking Misha Serkinov has everything over him. So I'm going to go with Misha Serkinov winning by a second round TKO through a sprawl and brawl tactic. Then we go to the co-main event, Michael Johnson versus Artem Lobov and probably the biggest fight in the entire card, or at least the most talked about fight in the entire card. I mean, it just shows how big of a name Artem is. But this is a very bad stylistic matchup for Artem. Michael Johnson did miss weight, but he weighed 147 and he didn't look too drawn out. So he definitely put an effort to it. Again, he came from 155. This is a very short notice fight. Can't blame him too much for missing the weight. But Michael Johnson is a great boxer. Fast hands, especially for a lightweight. But in featherweight, it kind of evens the speed with some of these guys. And at 145, his power is just like one away. In his last two fights, that power is just not there. He's almost just a guy who's outpointing people with his boxing. But he has excellent movement, very long strides in the cage, which can help him by surprising opponents with long shots. But it can also get him to the cage very easily. And against the cage against Artem is still going to be a problem for him. But they are both southpaw. And I can see Johnson throwing jabs at him and measuring and setting up the left hand. Rather than what he did at lightweight for most of his career because he fought a lot of orthodox fighters. And then it's just throw the left hand by stepping on the outside or something. So the jab is going to be a big problem for, Lo for Lobov in this one because the reach is, is crazy to look at. You're looking at 8 inch reach advantage for Michael Johnson and they are both about the same height. That's pretty alarming, especially with that jab, especially with the right hook. I mean, his right hook can probably beat Artem's straight shots with distance. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. But this is not a given fight for Michael Johnson. Artem is going to be a pretty tough fight for him. He is very tough, very pressuring. He has a good straight left hand. He can throw jabs as well by entering in the distance. And he has a very good ability to roll on punches, shoulder roll especially. So if Johnson throws anything looping, Artem can shoulder roll it and enter behind it. That's a problem. And the biggest thing going for Lobov is pressuring Johnson to the cage, keep him there, limit the space he can use, and force on exchanges, right? If you keep the output high on Johnson, he's a little bit too antsy with his punches. He throws a little bit too much to the point where he starts gassing himself out. And Lobov never gets tired. I can actually see, I'm visualizing right now, I can see him in the center of the cage and Artem walking him down, defending shots, walking Michael Johnson down, as Johnson's throwing his long shots and he has to retract it so he has to move back, potentially gets to the cage and they start walking laterally. Artem is cutting him off effectively. He starts throwing shots at Michael Johnson. Johnson's trying to answer back. The pressure's a little bit too much. Maybe not panicking, but he's trying to break the pressure, throwing a lot of shots to the point where he starts over committing a little bit too much and he's throwing more than he needs to throw. Artem's shoulder rolling. He's blocking the shots. He's trying to land his counter left hand, throwing leg kicks and then cutting off Johnson again. He's trying to move away because he got leg kicked. And this just continues on to the point where Johnson starts to get tired later in the fight. Just a visualization though. So the pressure of Lobov can do that. And Lobov doesn't have the worst takedowns. He took down Cub Swanson. Remember that. He took down Cub Swanson in the first round. Got it on the cage and tripped out the, tripped out, I think the right leg? Might have been the left leg. But tripped out the leg, got it to the ground. He could do the exact same thing to Johnson because Johnson's takedown defense is not the same in this division. The takedown defense percentage there. That is all from lightweight. I don't know what happened to his takedown defense at featherweight. Almost like he lost strength to defend the takedowns. I mean, he's getting taken down by smaller guys. Even Habib had a little bit of a problem taking down Michael Johnson. But these guys are taking him down at will. So Artem does have that as well. But I'm going to have to go with Michael Johnson on this one. I'm going to go by a decision. I think his jabs are going to be too much of a problem. I think his footwork is going to be too fast at the center of the cage. I think he's going to circle around Artem a lot. Look for that left hand. But just a lot of jabs and right hooks. And moving away from the short shots of Artem. Just make it a point fight. And then we go to the main event. Volkan Uzdemir versus Anthony Smith. This fight is definitely not going to a decision. Both strikers. No takedowns are going to happen I think. Volkan Uzdemir. Massive power. Especially in short range. It's kind of weird to see it happen. When he knocks people out with these punches. You will never think we're hurt a fly. So extremely deceptive power. Very pressuring fighter. But he will blow his wad a little too early sometimes. Like you saw in the DC fight. He went a little bit too hard in the first round. And slow down heavily in the second round but he has a good jab he has every strike in the book actually good leg kicks good body kicks good head kicks good jab good straight right hand good left hook good uppercuts good overhands but they're not the fastest shots or the most athletic 
His timing is so weird with his punches. It gets people off guard. But he loves to throw blitzing style combinations. He loves to he loves to rush opponents down with punches and dip at the end of it. Duck his head on the end of it to drive into the cage or something. And then he could utilize his massive power in there. He's going to be a handful in the clinch for anybody. Even against DC, he was a handful for DC. And DC's game is in the clinch. Anthony Smith is going to have a problem in the clinch with Volkan if it gets there. And Volkan's going to have to go for that because... Anthony Smith is, is a little bit longer and a little bit taller, and he is very dangerous in the striking, especially at distance. So he's going to have to close that distance. He could throw those blitzing style combinations, but he's going to have to watch out from a potential knee counter from Anthony Smith if he's able to move back with that fast footwork and throw the knee up as Volkan is looking to dip and drive to the cage. But other than that, Volkan has a good ability to move away from punches. He's very good at pulling on punches. And one thing he specifically does very well is he is excellent at faking shots to land a powerful punch. Like you saw against DC especially. He would throw a jab, look at the reaction. DC would usually move away from the jab, throw a right hand, but again, not committing with it, and see DC dip to his right. And then he would throw a left uppercut and commit with that and caught DC actually twice consecutively with it. With that same sequence. Very similar to what Floyd Mayweather would do in boxing where you throw a jab, see so your head goes, throw a jab again, see so your head goes again. If you extend too far, then he commits with his right hand. This is what Volkan does. Volkan maybe not throw the left uppercut because of the height difference between DC and Anthony Smith, but he can utilize it in other ways, right? Potentially look for a right overhand or a left hook over the top or even a body shot or something. Anthony Smith though, very long fighter, great at distance. That's where his game is going to be in this one. Killer instinct is through the roof. Whenever something presents itself for the finish, he will take it. But other than that, I think he's the more technical striker or the most dynamic striker here. He is actually faster than most guys in this division. He has an excellent left hook. One of the best left hooks in this division. Good straight right hand, good jab, good front kick, good kicks in general, good knees, good elbows in the clinch. But his game really revolves on a linear path. Right, He will back up with that long stance and it's very hard to get him. Leg kicks could work for a Volkan, but he will usually move back and throw these check left hooks or jabs and if he runs into the cage, because he usually does get pressured, his thought is, I gotta come back at him. There's no lateral movement really with Anthony Smith when he gets to the cage. It's, I move back, if I get too far back, I'm gonna have to commit on you and go forward on you. That's when he commits with his right hand, his powerful punches. He'll throw a jab in a straight right hand, throw an uppercut, he'll try to dive in with elbows. So it's a very dangerous game fighting Anthony Smith on this linear path. Volkan's gonna have to probably try to cut angles on him, throw leg kicks at him. So my prediction for this fight, I'm gonna go with Volkan Uzdemir. This fight is very hard to predict because of the killer instinct of Anthony Smith and the fact that he is a lot different at light heavyweight than he was at middleweight. But the biggest thing for Uzdemir is he could fight off angles, he has the leg kicks, but the biggest thing is he is super tough. He has been conditioned to be this tough throughout his entire career. He was the main sparring part for Rumble Johnson pretty much his entire career. He was built to be tough, and he took some of DC's best shots and just didn't really show he was hurt too much. And Anthony Smith, yes, this is light heavyweight, his chin is probably better here, but he's been knocked out plenty of times at middleweight, and that damage, you would have to think, settled in. Even though his chin is a little bit better, the damage is still there. So I think a big shot from Volkan could hurt Smith, and I could see Volkan taking some of Smith's shots. So I'm going to go Volkan Uzumir. I'm going to go by a second or third round TKO. Then let's go to the betting guys. See if there's anything interesting here. Artem is a big underdog. and he I think he can definitely win the fight. I do see Johnson winning, but it's not a, it's not a given. Ed Herman's a plus 200 underdog. I mean, you never know what happens in that fight. Court McGee is a plus 175. He could potentially drag it out on Alex Garcia like Ryan LaFleur did. Chris Fishgold is a plus 230-ish. 225 underdog, not a bad underdog to bet on. Don Maj, he's fighting a newcomer in the UFC, and he's a plus, almost a plus 400. So that is never a good thing to see from the betting odds perspective. Someone to keep your eye on, pro probably do a little bit more research. I don't know his game actually. I don't know T. Edwards too much. I saw T. Edwards on uh, the Contender Series. So him coming off that into the UFC and being that big of a favorite, it usually doesn't go that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. My weight cutting video will come out soon. My next video, though, will be a breakdown of one of the fights this weekend, so be on the lookout for that. And leave a comment below where your guys' predictions are and why. There's some really fun fights on this card. Definitely do not miss this card. And again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.